record on the main road. <laughs> what I'm going to show you is how to factorize a quadratic, lots of different cases. And um, first of all, what, what is a quadratic? It's just an expression where x squared is the highest term. An expression where x squared is the highest term. Uh, the first examples we're going to do is when we have a common factor in the expression. And I'll show you some examples of that. Okay, uh, this example, it's no, it's no different than my previous lesson, a previous video, on just factorizing when you have a common factor. You know, x squared is the highest term here. So when you do, you look at this, and they have a common factor of 6, and they have a common factor of x. And so this is no different than the previous lesson. 6x times what is 6x squared? That's x. And 6x times what gives me negative 18x? That would be minus minus 3. Okay, uh, same example here. It's still a quadratic because I've got um, squared. This time a is a common factor. I don't have any number common factors. a times what is 5a squared? Be 5a. And a times what is a? That's positive 1. Okay, so nothing too different there. All right, the next ones we'll look at is when there is no common factor, like there was up here. And um, they're going to be written in a, in a usual form. And the form they're going to be written in most of the time is, is going to be in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c. So something x squared where a can't be 0 because if, if that coefficient was 0, 0 times x squared would be 0, and then it wouldn't be a quadratic anymore. Um, but b and c can be 0. So... These examples here are when we don't have a common factor, and they're going to be written out like this with the x squared term first. Okay, so let's look at factorizing this expression right here. And what you look at are just your coefficients. Now, what I do, there's no common factor here. I can see there's no number or no letter that goes with all the terms. But you look at just two things. Since this is the opposite of expanding, you look at these two numbers here. And you think, uh, what, what two numbers multiply to get positive 30 and add to get 11? So the, the two numbers whose sum is 11 and whose product is 30. And notice when I did that, I circled their signs too, because that's important. You don't want to just leave that blank. So th what, are, what are two numbers? There's only, there's only one pair where you get that happening. So the two numbers whose sum is 11 and product is 30 is only 5 and 6. Those are going to be the numbers we use to put in the bracket. Uh, don't forget the signs. Positive 5 and positive 6. And we write the rest of the expression like this. Now, to check this, we could expand this out, like we've already learned. If we expanded this out, we would get this expression here. Okay, so just mental check. 5 plus 6 is 11. 5 times 6 is 30. Okay, uh, let's look at another one. Okay, so I, this example, I play that same game I did here. I look at negative 20, and I think of a product that multiplies to get that. And this guy doesn't have a coefficient, so if it doesn't, you just want to put a 1 there to help you out on this, on this method. So two numbers that times to get 20, multiply to get negative 20, I mean, and add to get 20 negative 1. Now this is a little bit of a guess and check game, but you should know that it has something to do with 5 and 4, okay? Not 10 and 2, because 10 and 2 won't give you negative 1. So which two numbers, when you, when you play around with them a bit, are going to give you a, a sum of negative 1 and a product of negative 20? Okay, I made my brackets kind of big here. But these two numbers, negative 5 plus 4 gives me negative 1, negative 5 times 4 gives me negative 20. We rewrite the rest of the brackets and I have my factorized expression. Completely different from when we have a common factor. Totally different. Okay, let's look at one more example when there's no common factor in. This one doesn't have a middle term, m squared minus 49. It doesn't have a x term. Well, it does have an x term. It's just 0x. So if you want to write this, you don't have to, but if you want to write it as uh, m squared plus 0m minus 49, it might might help you on your journey because now you're going to think of two numbers that multiply to get negative 49 and add to get 0. 
well, the two numbers I can think of that multiply to get negative 49 and add to get 0 are going to be opposites, uh, plus 7 and minus 7. Okay, and that works because when I expand that out, those middle terms cancel out. I get negative 7m and positive 7m. But to check it, uh, the negative 7 and positive 7 add to 0. Yep, and they multiply to get negative 49. Okay, and this guy does have a, a name called... When it's, when it's like this, m squared minus 49, we call those a difference of two squares. Difference because it's takeaway, and these two terms are squares. This is a square number, and that's a square algebraic term. Okay, lastly, what we're going to do is combine the last two concepts, and we have a common factor, and then when we don't. So I look at my expression here, and the first thing you should see, you got a 2, a 12, a 10. They're all even, so you can factorize a 2 out of each term. So we do that first, because in all my examples that I've done so far, my first coefficient here is 1, and that makes factoring easy. Okay, none of these have a coefficient in front of that squared term. So we factorize that 2 out of there, and then we can clean it up some more. 2 times b squared is 2b squared, 2 times 6b is 12b, and 2 times 5 is 10. Okay, so it looks like we're done, but we're not, because you've got to look at this expression, and see if we can do that factorizing thing again. That 2 is just riding on the outside. And I think of two numbers that, uh, whose product is 5 and sum is 6. Product is 5 and sum is 6. Um, those two numbers give me not 2 and 3, but 5 and 1. Plus 1 and plus 5. Uh, 1 plus 5 is 6. 1 times 5 is 5. And that's my final expression. So I had to do two steps there. Okay, let's look at one more one more example like that. Then we'll do some practice. Okay, next example. I have an expression. Easy to see that 5 is the common factor. So I pull that out of each term first. 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. 5 times 6 is 30. Okay, so here I just... I. Is it simplified or not? I don't know if I can factorize this or not. So I look at these two. Um, two numbers that multiply to get 6 and add to get negative 5. Yeah, I can play around with 3 and 2. Um, and it looks like they're both going to have to be negative. Because negative 3 times negative 2 is 6. And negative 3 plus negative 2 is negative 5. And that checks. That's what I want to do. So I've got n minus 3 and n minus 2. The order of these brackets doesn't matter since you're multiplying them and the order you multiply doesn't change the answer. Okay, so hopefully we get that and I'll put some practice problems up here and see how we do.